The following information shows a group of people's waist measurements and weights. And then you can see the table below. Now what we're being asked to do is calculate a correlation coefficient, R, for the waist and weight measurements. And then we'll use that to describe the strength of the relationship. So if you want to think back, we had uh, a single variable um, that we had to put in our data into our calculator, but now we've got bivariate data. There's the waist and then there's the weight. And very helpfully, it, the question has even told us which one is X and which one is Y. So again, we'll come over to our calculator now. Um, just like before, I'm going to clear out all of the data that was in there. All right, it's all clear. And now when I go to setup, stat, for two. Um, you can see to get into bivariate data, rather than pressing one for a single variable, I'm going to press two, which is A plus BX. And I'm just going to jot that down for a second, A plus BX. That's what tells me that there's going to be two variables there. And uh, I'm going to return to that A plus BX when we have a look at the next question. But for now, let me hit two. And as we uh, hopefully anticipated, you got the two columns there to put in your waste data and your weight data. So let's go ahead and put those in. Now if I press 103, which is the first waste piece of data and press equals, you notice it goes down to the next value for X. So it's not going to be 82, which is a weight score. It's going to be 88, which is the waste score. So I'm going to do all of those waste pieces of data, 88, 67. I'm going to do all these in a row, 72, 96, 81, 99, and 90. Okay, so there's all of the waste measurements. And I'll just, again, as I usually do, go back and check that all my numbers are in the clear. Great. And then I'll go over to the weights. So these are the Ys, and I'm going to put them all in order as well. 82 first. If you press equals, you can see, again, it goes down the list just like it did before. So 73, 51, 62, 85, 71, 81, and lastly, 79. And thankfully, you can see all of my X scores line up with all of the Y scores. So at least I know there's the same number of both. I'll just double check that all of my scores are inputted correctly. I'm happy with that. Okay, so now I'm going to clear that. All the data has been saved. How do I get to the correlation coefficient? Well, like before, to get into the menu for this, I'm going to go shift and then one. The menu that I'm um, wanted to go into now is five for um, REG stands for regression. So if I press five there, and the one that I'm after here, the correlation coefficient, the question itself even reminds us that's denoted by an R. Um, maybe it's a reminder because R is such a weird counterintuitive letter to choose for correlation coefficient. So I'm gonna go ahead, press three there, and it gives me a value. So I'm gonna write from the calculator, I'm getting a value of, R equals 0 0.947662 dot dot dot. That's what the correlation coefficient is, but now I need to draw a conclusion off of that. So it says describe the strength of the relationship. Now, this requires you to think back to what the different options are for, you know, how high can this value R go? I'm going to actually go all the way back in the paper to this part here. Um, if you have a look at this closely correlated data here over on the left-hand side, the closer all of those data points cling to the line of best fit, the closer your correlation coefficient gets to one. Um, whereas if you have a look at this uh, data set B over here, because they're just scattered everywhere, you're going to have a correlation coefficient of about zero. Now I should correct, on data set A, because it's a negative uh, correlation, I'm actually going to get something like negative one. But the point is, um, it's very far away from zero. It ranges from negative one to one. So I'm looking for um, values like that. Now if you have a look down to this question, now we can interpret this 0 0.94. Is that high or is it low? And the answer is it's very, very close to one. So what I would say is this is a strong and it's positive because it's not uh, negative 0 0.947, etc. It's a strong positive correlation. So that's all we needed to comment on that. 
Find the equation of the least squares regression line. That's what part B is asking for. Now again, we've actually done all the hard work entering that data into the calculator. We just need to go back to it. So let's just get it here. I'm gonna clear this out. Now to get to the equation of the least squares regression line, we need two things. We need a gradient of the line, then we need a y-intercept. So when you go to shift one to bring up these options here, I'm gonna go back to five for REG again. And this is where I'm going to remind you that when we selected this statistical mode in the first place, we this mode was called A plus BX. Now that A plus BX refers to the equation of the least squares regression line. The A is gonna be the y-intercept and the B is gonna be the gradient. So let's work out what those two numbers are each in turn. A is going to be, let's have a look here, it's going to be one press equals there. So that gives me negative 1.236979 dot dot dot. And then I'm going to clear that and I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to ask for B. So there's two equals that. So that's B. So that gives me 0 0.853298 six dot dot dot. Okay. Now I take that and I put it into my equation, which I said from the beginning was A plus BX. That's what the calculator used. So I'm just gonna put these in. Uh, negative 1.2, uh, I'm gonna round it off there to two decimal places, and then I'm gonna add 0 0.85, and uh, that just rounds down to five, so X. Um, to two decimal places. Whoops, just changed the page there by accident. There we go. So it was very common for students to think that B was actually the y-intercept because if you think back to when we first learned coordinate geometry, um, we tended to write straight lines in this form, y equals mx plus b. So I know that is a bit confusing. It's because you're coming from the coordinate geometry world and the people did the way people did things in that uh, conventionally was like this. But in the statistical world, and the calculator itself reminds you, we write it in this form. So the b is the gradient and you've got to remember not to switch those around. Very common mistake.